Hey, this is Brandon Henner with Extreme Networks. I got Shay Campen with us. Uh, we're going to talk about our Extreme Control product, which allows us to get a little bit more visibility and, and control into the devices attaching to the network. So, Shay, if you could, uh, if you could give us a, a few minutes to talk a little bit about Extreme Control, please, I'll let you run with it. All right. Good morning, Brandon. Uh, yeah, I want to talk about Extreme Control, which is Extreme's NAC um, product, NAC Network Access Control, but. One of the important elements of any NAC product is the visibility. Right here, I'm on the homepage, the dashboard. Right when you log in, this is the first thing you see. It's gonna give you a nice breakdown of who's connected, how they're connected, what types of devices they're using. You know, general breakdown of what that population looks like. Uh, if it's a headless device, like an IP camera, or if it's a staff versus a student, this is all very important in understanding how your network is used. And, you know, that, that, and under, that understanding is necessary for how you're going to secure your network. If you don't know what's on your network, you cannot secure it. And if you don't know what's on the network and you try to secure it, you're gonna break everything. So the, the first element is really the visibility of any NAC solution, but particularly extreme control. Um, another useful thing might be is if you're experiencing issues on the network, for instance, um, your ability to track, whether it's an authentication, DNS, DHCP, those types of things is important, but also, is it particular to a specific device type? So if, for instance, if I have a large population of students who use Chromebooks or Mac OS X or, or Windows machines, the ability to not only see what operating system, but perhaps, you know, uh, which hardware they're running that operating system on is important. And you've got all that visibility here. So, you know, if I wanna understand a certain user is always having problem with this, problems with a certain Chromebook and he's always calling my help desk. And if I want to understand, is this a Chromebook issue or is this a user issue? Well, I can come in here and see all the Chromebooks on the network and say, hey man, must be you. It's not all Chromebooks. So that, that guy's probably fat fingering uh, you know, his credentials or something like that. And yeah, you know, wouldn't it be nice, you know, if if when a, a, a student calls in, which happens daily, hourly, by the minute some days, that we had an easy way to track what their issue could be. And we didn't have to ask them for a bunch of information. We didn't have to say, you know, John, which access point are you connected to? Which, which uh, dorm room are you sitting in right now? Which classroom are you in? Okay, let me go track down the AP I think you're most likely connected to. Let me drill into the controller. Let me drill into an SSH session on the access point, blah, blah, blah. You know, you're, you're talking five minutes, 10 minutes just to track down where the problem might begin. Well, with this visibility in the central point, the central touch point, we can just come right here. And let's say Kennedy call this. Let's type in Kennedy and see how many devices Kennedy has on the network. Well, looks like just the one, and it's a probably a Surface book. So I drill in here, and I can see, yeah, they're running Windows 8. And it's M Kennedy, and I can get some more information about the, the client device. I can see which access point Kennedy is connected to, as well as which controllers upstream or are terminating Kennedy's sessions. So. If I want to know a little bit more, I can just keep jumping over these tabs you see at the top. So details about Kennedy's session, more, more, more information about you know exactly how Kennedy is connecting on the 802.1x network, and and it's a staff member actually. So we can see that we're applying staff policies. Um, if we were doing any health assessment on Kennedy, we would see that here. We can see more information about, you know, top applications, top types of traffic fingerprints that are running across our network from Kennedy, et cetera. Also, the network information tab here. If we look at this, we're, we're seeing who the client is, again, which, which controller they're connected to, which access point they're connected to. And, and to differentiate this from other NAC solutions, since there's also a management, a network node management component built into this, or NMS, we're also able to see the radio properties of the access point Kennedy is connected to right now, which is really cool because, you know, that keeps me from having to jump out of my NAC solution back into an NMS solution. It's all right here. So if I want to understand, you know, is, is channel utilization really high on Kennedy's access point or are we having issues with, with basic data rates? Etc. And we need to make some configuration changes. Well, I've got some metrics here that are going to help me help me investigate that a little further. So that's really the power. It's it's, it's really the visibility, but not only that, it's the ability to take that information that you gain from the network and to enforce security policies as well. With that, Brandon, I'll hand it over back to you for a little bit deeper dive into the technology.
Thanks, Jay. I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really great, you know, being able to get that granular visibility into the infrastructure. But let's talk a little bit about how we uh, build this architecture, right? So we're going to dive a little deeper into this, right? So uh, if we wanted to um, understand what devices are connecting in the network, you know, this is a very simple process. We just spin it up and uh, turn on authentication on the network and put it in just a pass through state where we're collecting data. We're not actually doing anything with it yet. So we'll start populating this in-system database with devices that are attaching to the network and we'll see it constantly updating um, and, and just get a little visibility. And then we'll start honing in on, okay, now that these devices are connected, what do we wanna do with it? Because that's the biggest challenge, right? Um, it's great that we understand what's connecting to the network, but the biggest challenge as an administrator is how do we control those devices to make sure we're not creating some kind of vulnerability in the network uh, by by exposing uh, student records or applications that devices shouldn't be able to access. Uh, typically, that would mean some complex access list, you know, typically configured via CLI. And, and wouldn't it be great if we had a way to make that process simple to manage and simple to deploy? And not only that, but deployed in a dynamic fashion so that as the devices are attaching to the network, they get applied the right security posture. That's gonna make the administrator's life easier, but also make the user's life easier because they're completely, uh, that process is completely unknown to them. They don't realize it's happening. All they know is that they connected to the Wi-Fi or they plugged into the port on the wall, they logged in and they now have access to the network with all the right resources they need access to. Um, and and all the ones they don't need access to are prevented from, from being able to access. So how do we build this out, right? We create these policies of what users can and can't do. I say users loosely. It could be a device type, right? It could be an IP camera. Let's say we create an IP camera profile where we're only allowing certain base services uh, for that camera to use on the network. We're obviously delivering a very high class of service, video priority. And uh, maybe we want to contain our video surveillance traffic to a spe specific VLAN, right? And when we push this setting out, we're actually applying it to every switch and every access point on our entire network. Because again, remember, we don't care how the device connects to the network. We want it to be treated exactly the same, regardless of the physical medium that they're using, right? So uh, an IP camera behaves exactly different if it's a wireless camera or a wired camera. camera. We profile it and assign it the right resources on the network. Same same thing with a uh, a desk phone or a printer or whatever the case might be. We apply those particular device properties, and if someone unplugs this access point and plugs in their laptop, they get assigned the guest access profile, and they're limited to web services and basic services on the network. They do not have access to the AP profile, giving them access to um, maybe find attack vectors for the wireless network, right? Because the network is constantly learning and very dynamic with the extreme control, we're able to provide granular control over the devices attaching to the network. So. Uh, coming over here to extreme control, uh, it's basically asking me if I want to save the changes I made, but I'm not going to. So anyways, we'll, we'll, we'll look at the in-system database. We'll see all this great data, but what do we do with it, right? That's where we come in and build the configuration, right? We call this the rule engine, where we build out what users can and can't do. A lot of these profiles are pre-built for us, and we can just right-click and enable them, right? Um, and, and we're good to go. Some of them, we might want to create some custom profiles, let's say for Chromebooks, or maybe we want to create a profile that says, uh, I don't want an Xbox or PlayStation to be able to connect to my wired network, right? It's as simple as just creating a new rule and say, deny uh, Xbox, right? So we'll uh, say, we'll create the rule name. Uh, this will be an in-system group type. Notice we can create a user group profile that assigns maybe students different access resources on the network than faculty. Uh, but in this case, we'll just select, uh, you know, particular types of devices, you know, and, and so you can see some of them are already created here um, and we can create our own. So 
but we can also do uh, uh, device type groups, right? So if I go over here to device type groups, you can see I actually have a game console profile already created. This is a prepackaged in the solution and it identifies some of these for me, right? And I can tune this as I need, but I could just say, uh, I'm gonna select all game consoles and then the action, what are we doing with these devices? Well, we're going to quarantine them, right? Uh, so they cannot access the network. And once we save this, we're done. We just created a profile. So um, every device that attaches to the network, if it's an Xbox, PlayStation, whatever it is, some kind of gaming device, it now automatically gets quarantined and is restricted network access. Uh, and, and this took us seconds, right? It was a very simple process to build out. And so we can build out these rules of what users can and can't do and apply it in a dynamic way. Again, making it simpler for the devices to attach to the network in a secure way, but also keeping the administrator out of those manual day-to-day -day changes that they have to make uh, to, to really just make your life simpler. Uh, we can do some really amazing things uh, if we dive a little deeper into like Captive Portal, for instance. So if we wanted to provide guest registration, authenticated registration on a single page, this is really important for consolidating down the number of wireless networks. The last thing you want is a client pulling up their Wi-Fi on their phone and seeing, oh, geez, do I connect to student SSID, faculty SSID, BYOD SSID, IoT SSID? You know, you don't want them getting confused trying to figure out which wireless network they connect to. You want them to pull up their wireless network, and it's a school Wi-Fi. You select it and you get on, right? And that can be delivered with unique security postures based on how they log in when they connect to that wireless network via the website configuration tool here. Um, and, and you can customize that look and feel to have the your school logo and, and specific color scheme and things like that to make it look and feel the way you want it to feel. So, in summary, we're, we're providing a lot of really great tools with this application to make, make the management of uh, the network very simple, very secure, and, and both for the administrator and for the user. So with that, I'll say thank you. Uh, we're going to make more of these videos to, to show you in the near future, and uh, please stay tuned for more. Thank you so much. Okay.